Welcome everybody. We are here with Drew Estate for Aloni Cigar Lounge's 12th anniversary event. We got the man himself, the ambassador, Mr. Pedro Gomez. Thank you so very much for having me on your show, buddy. First thing first, I want to give a beautiful shout out to everybody that follows you on social media. And what is your social media so we can tell everybody, especially if you put this on YouTube, so yes. you can have people on, on Instagram. What is your Instagram right there? My Instagram is Smoke in the Bay. Smoke, T H A N, the letter N, B A Y. There you go. And for everybody that have been following my man, I want to thank you from behalf of Drew Stay. Thank you so very much for your support, and thank you for everything that you guys do for Drew Estate. For me, it's a privilege to be right here in Fremont, California. Definitely, man. Doing We're... this event with these guys right here. I'm from Esteli, Nicaragua. So I travel like ghosts all over the country, but my heart is where the cigar is. There it is. And this is the place that gave, they got everything. Not just from Drew Estate, but from a lot of cigar companies. So if you're right here in Fremont, Florida, I mean Fremont, Fremont, California. California. <laughs> Shit. In Fremont, California, you better come and check this place out. They got an amazing selection of cigars. They got a beautiful lounge. Check this out. Bam! And we got Drew Estate tonight right here in the house. We got a very nice event going on. Free cigars, cool swag, raffle tickets, and everything. Everything. All right, well, let me ask you a couple yes. of questions while we're here, my man. So, first off, you started with Jewish State in 2006, right? My man, that is correct, yes. All right. Well, tell me, how did it feel coming up in the industry, starting off as a worker at a factory, uh -huh. to now the ambassador of Jewish State? Wow, man, wow, man, what a great question. Well, first things first, you know, God is good, and I will never be where I am without God. Secondly, you know, when it comes to myself, Having the opportunity yes. to represent something that is handmade in your hometown with raw material that comes from your homeland, for me, I don't take it lightly. Yes. I take it to my heart. Yes. You're serious about you. One hundred percent. Because I will never put into words the hard work. The passion, the love that goes into cigars, especially the people that are making cigars in Nicaragua, Honduras, Dominican Republic, Cuba, in all the places that make cigars because, I mean, coming to a smoke a cigar, a cigar lounge is a beautiful experience. Yes. But having the opportunity to go to those places and see how those cigars are being made, how they do grow that tobacco, that's gonna that's gonna give you an uh, experience that next time that you smoke a cigar, you're gonna have a whole different appreciation. Exactly. And life and cigar appreciation goes hand to hand. Yes. Very much. Okay. Oh yeah, big time. Big time. <laughs> All right. So, what does it take to become a tobacco expert? Okay. Well, it takes. That's a great question, man. Oh, wonderful. So first thing first. You gotta know where your heart is. Yes. Because when you believe it, no matter what, you're gonna keep going. Yes. So it, it, a cigar man, anybody can become a cigar man if you follow your heart. True. Love is one thing. Passion is a whole different type of love. It's a different ball game. That's right. And when it comes to this type of business, like making premium cigars, creating different blends, launching different cigar brands, and crossing your finger that cigars are going to sell, everything comes back to the root. The type of tobacco that you're using, how you are blending those tobaccos, how consistent is the production, and how much quality those cigars has. So in other words, if you love what you do, it's good. But if you have a passion of what you do, that becomes an unstoppable love. Nice. You and can't lose. You can lose. And even if you, if people are telling you that you're going to fail, one thing that I can tell you, brother, is this. 
in life, the biggest blessing is to find something that you love. Yes. Because we're going to fail at some point in our life. But failing in something that you hate doesn't even compare to fail on something that you love. Yes. But you have to fail sometimes you to get fail, on top. Yeah. Like Drew State, we have, we have failed many times. Okay. The idea is that learning from those mistakes and keep moving forward. Okay. So what does it take to be a good tobacco man? I would say that it takes knowledge, okay. it takes experience. And it takes about you doing errors and tries, errors and tries, errors and tries, and errors and tries every fucking day. You have to because there back. is not a fucking book that you need to follow. No. You gotta do this, you gotta do that. Every tobacco give you what it's going to give you based on how you work with those tobaccos. Exactly. How you grow this type of seed is very different compared to how you grow that type of seed. Okay. How you blend this type of feeders, I'm talking about Seco, Bisu, and Mijeros, how they marry together with different type of binders, different type of wrappers. It's also about knowing, you know, creating a cigar, not the cigars that you're going to love. It's got the cigar that the market is going to embrace. That's very different. Right? So that means by taking that approach, you are going to go from one extreme to another extreme. Gotcha. That means that every cigar that you are putting in the market, it's gonna be, it has to be very different from one to another. Exactly. So at the end of the day, how much does it take to be a good cigar man or a tobacco man? One thing for sure, Mike, is that these things think work. You have to have a very good team in your side. Otherwise, you are not going to be the one planting the tobacco, you are not going to be the one uh, priming the tobacco, you are not going to be the one uh, curing that tobacco, you are not going to be the one fermenting that tobacco, you are not going to be the one blending that tobacco, you are not going to be the one making every cigar day in and day out. So that means that you need to have a very good team, a team that you can rely on and people that you can uh, uh, delegate. Okay. Because if you are... If you are in the move to growth, and growth, growth brings a lot of investment that you have to do in business. Growth brings uh, disruption. Okay. And by bringing disruption, you need to have your own team in the same page. Gotcha. Yeah. That's All right. hands on deck that are involved mm -hmm. in making one cigar. Mm -hmm. You have to have passion, right. fire, and desire that's right. to create that smoke for everybody that's in this Absolutely. lounge to enjoy. Yes. And another thing, you have to go to those places where they grow that, that tobacco and they make that cigar. Gotcha. Okay. You have to really breathe, live, and die. If you want to soak, if you want to succeed in this type of business, you know? Yes. Exactly. One thing that the cigar business is all about, it's about the people. Yes. Like Carlito Fuentes said, I got my respect for him and his family, his company, and it's about the people. When you are creating something, creating a blend, it's like creating a recipe yes. of a soup or anything that we eat. You know what I mean? Exactly. And the best thing when you cook, brother, is when you got people that you can share that food with. The same thing goes when you are blending a cigar. The best experience is when you share that cigar with somebody else. And something the money cannot buy is when people come and say to you, Mike, what a great cigar. Yes. Where I can get more. You feel good. Feel good. And that's something the money and MasterCard cannot buy. <laughs> but don't leave home without it. All right. Okay. So what are some of your favorite creations you've created with Drew Estate? Well, with Drew Estate, we have a very good team. Uh, me in 2006 up to right now, this cigar that I have seen Drew Estate launching into the market has been Tobacco Especial, has been Liga Privada, has been Underground, has been Herrera STV, Mica Rustica, 20 Acre Farm, uh, Papi Van Wilco, oh, yeah. uh, Blackhead, our collaboration with Metallica. Metallica. Oh, you Metallica heads and out there. And many more, man. At the end of the day, for me, it has been a beautiful blessing being part of this and seeing the growth of the company. 
from inside. Electrical not inside, not here in the United States. Inside in the factory where it all begins. When I first joined Drew State in 2006, I do remember that our daily production was between 25,000 to 30,000 cigars per day. Okay. Which was a decent production back in that time for Drew State. Nowadays, Drew State is producing a lot of, a lot of cigars. And at the end of the day, we always put ourselves in this position. We always think boutique. Boutique, okay. And, and why is this? Move, we got to do it in a very macro level. Okay. So that means that if we were making 25,000 cigars a day in 2006, right now the amount of account that we provide cigar, we have to provide cigar to many more. Exactly. So that means that right now our daily production of real estate that give us the position to be the largest premium cigar factory in Nicaragua. So that means that we are making between 260 to 265,000 cigars a day. Wow. So it's, it's crazy to think. That's mind-boggling numbers. But everything comes back. You guys are following us. Everything comes back having your thing in the same page. Exactly right. Because the people that have been with Drew Estate since day one, they're the same people. They are managing, they were managing five people. Now they are managing 500 people, exactly. a thousand people. So everything is about having everybody on the same page. And then most importantly, everything is about following the direction of the company. What is the mission? that we want to accomplish, well, in this case, it's goals and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's about having a clear direction. Okay. Because growing, growing, growing without without having a path where you need to go, that's when things really fell back. Gotcha. But having, you know, a path where we need to lead through a state, that's where everything starts to make sense. If you start to see things backwards, Okay. When we see when everything that we are looking for the future, we are working on different projects that are going to come up late this year, next year in 2020, 2026 and 2027. Okay. So we have to plan way ahead yeah. in order to come up with something. Exactly. Sounds like a plan. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. What in a day does Pedro smoke with his cigars? What do you like to start with and what do you like to end your day with when you're smoking multiple cigars? Oh, man, I like that one, bro. Yeah. I smoke everything under the sun. Everything that I can give it from everybody else, you know, it could be a, 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 a gift from a friend of mine that worked for another company yeah. or a gift, of, a, a cigar gift from a guy that owns a cigar company or cigar factory. Okay. Those are the ones that I like to enjoy and taste. You know, I smoke everything. Yes. Because at the end of the day, you know, I will never be smoking the same cigar, the same cigars every day doesn't give you the scale of the scope of what this industry is all about. Okay. So you need to smoke a little bit of everything and a little bit from everybody. So to me, my go-to when it comes to cigars that I truly enjoy are medium to full. Medium to full, okay. In medium bodies. But medium to full are my go-to. Okay. All right. Now, what does it take, when you're thinking of a cigar in your mind, what does it take to get started traveling to the factory, smoking several different blends, mm -hmm. what does it take to make a perfect cigar that you're going to put on the shelf for the customer to buy? Oh my God, that's a great question. Disagree well, put it like this. There are thousands of phenomenal cigars exactly. that they will never see the light at the real estate. That means... <laughs> that means... That if that blend was extremely on point, but somehow we didn't have enough tobacco inventory, the cigar is not gonna come. Gotcha. If we didn't have enough people making that cigar, the cigar is not gonna come. If we don't have the, the tobaccos that are ready to go to the production floor and be processed to make cigars, it's not going. So at the end of the day, I would say that. When it comes to making a cigar, the, the, if you, can you repeat the question again? 
what does it take in a time when you want to create a cigar and you have a thought in your mind, mm -hmm. what are your steps and what do you do to create that perfect cigar to put on the shelf for the customers? My man, I got you nice and clear now. Right. So everything is about how much of the capacities that you have, okay. how much of the inventory that you have, what you want to do with that. If that's going to be a, a, a limited edition, okay. if it's going to be exclusively for certain shops, or it's going to be for the masses, like a regular production. Yes. So that's that. So you don't have to figure it out that before you jump into any blend. Gotcha. So once you find the blend, you have to find something unique about that blend. It could be the tobacco, which really set the record straight. Also have to have, put it like this, a cigar, there is a lot of elements that goes into a beautiful batch of cigars. Yes. got to be the main. The name without interfering in existing names in the market. Okay. That means that your name has to be a hundred percent unique. Otherwise, you're gonna have trademark legal issues uh, later on. You don't want Secondly, that. no, you don't want that. Especially if you are starting with this. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> you need to have a, a good story to tell. Okay. Everybody, if you find something good. It's good to know at least a pin or two about what you're smoking or what you're enjoying. A good example that I can take, I don't know if you guys have those beers right here in California, it's called Jingling. Jingling is a beer that comes from Pennsylvania. Okay. It's the oldest beer in the United States. And by being the oldest, that stuck on me in my head the first time that I tried that beer. And after that, I've been very loyal to that jingling beer. Yeah. It's a lager beer, very refreshing, very nice, extremely consistent. Every time that I try one of those, the same thing goes with the cigars. It has to have consistency, it has to have quality, it has to have a story. Okay. What is the story? A good example today, the last one that we are featuring at this event, is called Shade to Black S84 Black and Cigar by Pure Stain. It's our second collaboration with Metallica. It's our second collaboration with Black and American Whiskey. It's our collaboration between James Hetfield, the lead singer of Metallica, Robert Dietrich, the master distributor of Black and American, um, Black and American Whiskey, Jonathan Drew Drew Stein, and we got this project for you guys. So that's a story right there. Now, the cigar, the blend, is the one that set the record straight. And the one that set the record straight is the cigar that really live the test of time. When a cigar came, became legendary. Yes. And how you became a brand legendary is about making a very good cigar day in and day out. Knowing what distribution channels are going to be, that's very important. Yes. Secondly, knowing who's going to carry that cigar. And thirdly, you have to know who you market that cigar for. Yes. Exactly. And at the end of the day, if the cigar is good, the cigar is going to move. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. All right. All right. Traveling, traveling to factories, what is it like going to different factories to see your product being created, rolled, and even like we were talking about, new stuff that's going to be coming out, new cigars, new right. brands and flavors? That's good. So when it comes to them... There, there are cigar companies in business where they do contract, production contracts with other cigar manufacturers. Okay. At uh, Drew Stay, we, we manufacture everything in-house, but going to different cigar factories, the most beautiful thing that you're going to take out of everything is meeting the people that make those cigars, brought that tobacco. All the hands. Learning the techniques that they choose to make those cigars or to cure that tobacco, or to ferment that tobacco, or to grow that tobacco. And every company, they do it differently. Yes. Everybody uses different techniques. And you use the one that works the best for you. So that means a Drew stay. A good example, at the aging call room, every, not everybody, but certain companies, they use escaparates aging rooms. Okay. That means that they bring the production that has been already checked in the production floor, that has been already checked in the quality control department. They store the cigars in an escaparate room. That means in a room that is room temperature, and they age the cigar for 30 days. 
No, a Drew Stay, we use aging cold rooms. That means that as soon as the cigar has been already checked in the production floor, in the quality control department, the cigar goes to the aging cold room and we keep the cigar from 60 to 90 days. Okay. What's the magic behind between 60 to 90 days? You are letting that tobacco marinate. What is seco, piece on the head of in the filler, what is the binder, what is the grapper, put it together from 60 to 90 days. So that means that if you smoke a cigar fresh from the rolling tables, it's going to taste very different compared to a cigar that has been already aged. To the point that the factory said, this is where the point where the cigar is going to deliver the best of the best. So that means when we export, when we export those tobacco, those cigar boxes from Nicaragua to our warehouse in Miami, from our warehouse to Miami to all the stores across the country, those cigars are good to go. That means that I don't have to tell you, you gotta, you gotta let them see them your human. Yes. Hey, sir, you're buying this box, but you cannot smoke this cigar right now. They are too fresh. We cannot say that. Yeah. That means that the cigar factory has to guarantee that cigar is good to go from the get okay. So all of these cigars that we are selling tonight, all of them are ready to go. Yes. And that's uh, the yes. difference between, one of the difference, I mean, there are many different yes. between one factory and another factory. Uh -huh. Interesting point. <laughs> Interesting point. All right. What does Pedro do in his free times when you get away from cigars and you're on your own, whether you're friends and family? What does Pedro do in his free time? Man, well, what I do in my free time, I like to have like a normal life <laughs> because I travel so much all over the country. Like, like when was it? Like two weeks ago, I was in Atlanta. I was doing events in Atlanta. This week I'm here in California, so right now I'm here in Fremont, tomorrow we're going to be in Napa, okay. next day we're going to be in LA, and then next week I'm going to be in Virginia, all the way to Washington DC. So when I'm home, this is what I do, Mike. I like to cook. I like to go to the grocery store and buy the groceries, you know what I mean? And then I like to have people at my house for dinner. So that means that we, we drink, we smoke, we do a little bit of karaoke here and there, you know? <laughs> And then what else? Uh, I like to, well, being in Miami, I like to go to the beach. Uh, I like to go to the beach and grill meat at the beach, hang out with my friends, and have cigar for everybody, and be enjoying the scene. Another thing that, if you got time to spend with family, is the best. My family is in Nicaragua, so I only see them once a year. But when I have the opportunity to bring my dad for a visit in Miami, there is a time that I'm going nowhere, and Drew State knows that I'm not going to be attending to the office, none of them. Yes. It's going to be family time. Because, you know, family, my is to the North Star, and always will be. When you people that they run away from their family, at some point, if they are clever enough, they are going to come back. Okay. Because at the end of the day, what family gives you, it gives you a reason to live, and it gives you a cost to that. Okay? So family is everything. So to me, all my families in Nicaragua, I'm from Nicaragua. My whole family is from Nicaragua. And one thing for sure is that when you got time with family, bro, don't take it, don't take it from them. No, you cannot. You yeah, cannot. So, me, that's what I do in my personal time. You know, so. Sounds good. Easy beast. Yeah. <laughs> All right. A couple more questions for you here. Mm -hmm. Travel. Mm -hmm. You get to travel the world. How is that exciting to go from one point of life thinking, am I going to work? Right. A regular job. But now you are the ambassador of one of the largest cigar the largest one of the largest of our companies in the world how is that travel well you know i would say that life always prepares you for opportunities so before i'm doing this before i was with drew state i was a saddle maker in my hometown okay so i started to work when i was 11 years old so that means i didn't have no shelves whatsoever yeah but i don't regret nothing in my life that was the path that I have to go through. That's what I went through. And you got to take the best of the best. Exactly. One thing that life shows you 
is that where you grew up in a place where there is no opportunities, there is not a fucking room to fuck it up. That means if you're gonna go in, you're gonna go all the way in. All the way. Discipline and always thinking for the best and expecting the best. Well, before you expect the best, you gotta give your goddamn best. So to me, I, I'm not a stranger to work hard. So I did that for 10 years. Then after that, I was very blessed to apply for this scholarship. I applied for that scholarship in Nicaragua. The scholarship was paid by the United States government and it was managed by Georgetown University. Okay. So the program sent me to Iowa. I studied English in Iowa. I didn't, I didn't have no English, bro. Gotcha. <laughs> I am still working on my English. So you see me in my Tony Montana coming out of nowhere. Don't, 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 don't take it in the ground way. So to me, yes, I was living in Iowa for two years and I graduated. The major that I applied for in the first place for this scholarship was international business. Okay. So when I went back to Nicaragua, I went to every single cigar factory looking for a job because I was determined enough not to go back to the saddle shop. So what's the point if you go from a small little saddle shop to come and stay in the United States and then coming back from where it got and you out. So that means that you gotta you gotta follow the rules because the rules of my program was that you cannot overstay your visa. You have to go back to your country. And that's what I did. I went to every single cigar factory looking for a job. Nobody had nothing for me because it's difficult to find an open position, especially in a third world country. But when I went to Drew State, they didn't have nothing. Guess what happened to me, bro? They said to me, hey, Pedro, we don't got nothing for you, but uh, if you want to work, come tomorrow at 7 a.m. and we're going to find something for you. So what does it mean, find something for you? That means that you're going to be the cake guy. You're going to be the chauffeur guy. You're going to be getting lunches and dinner for people that are having dinners at the factory, you know? Yes. And I was very lucky to get my little lunch when I was getting lunches for everybody. So in other words, if you have seen the, the movie Goodfellas, I was young hen, very proudly, I can tell you that, okay? <laughs> Doing everything that they asked me to do without even thinking about fucking degrees and none of that. Because I come from the streets in Nicaragua, I come from yeah. nothing, bro. Yeah. So to me, having something, it means everything. So one opportunity brought to another opportunity. First year I was doing whatever they asked me to do, like the gopher guy. Second year, they promoted me to be the operation manager assistant. Okay. So I start to see how Blue State Factory operates and run. Then after that, they promoted me to run the cigar safari tours. So I had the opportunity to learn how they, how these guys speak about cigars and tobacco. From Jonathan Drew, the founder of Blue State, Marvin Samuel, the co-founder of Blue State, Steve Saka, the CEO and president of Blue State. Nicholas Melillo, who used to be my boss, and I learned from him as well when he was giving the, the tour. And then after that, they asked me, you, do, you go ahead and do the tours. Because when they were backpackers coming to Drew State Factory to, to have a tour, they were thinking and expecting to have a one hour or 30 minute cigar tour at Drew State Factory. I was bringing this motherfucker ears for five hours, telling them how much does it take to make this cigar. So to me, I had uh, my DNA, you know what I mean? Yeah. So then after that, Drew State gave me the position to run the international sale for Drew State. Okay. So I did that for three years. And then in 20, 2012, Jonathan offered me the opportunity to come and work full time for them in the United States. So I was six months in Nicaragua running the Cigar Safari Tour, yes. 35 groups. From Sunday to Sunday, every week two groups. No days off. Retailers and consumers, no days off. To me, it was about if I'm gonna give you everything, but I'm gonna go and give you my goddamn fucking best. You have to go. And that's what I did. And then 2013 came up, and then I started to travel all around the country. At first, Mike, well, let me tell you something. What's up? I was like, Pedro, this week you're going to Chicago. The following week you're going to New York. The following week you're going to LA. The following week you're going to Dallas. And I was All yo, way. let's go, let's go. All boom, over. Boom, boom, boom. But the thing about this is that in life, you gotta take it as a marathon. Okay. That means if you're taking a hundred meter sprint, you're gonna burn yourself. 
And this thing is about being consistent all the time. So my end, I remember like asking questions to Jonathan through, hey, when I was in Ikara, where were you this past month? Because he used to call, I mean, he used to call a lot to the factory. But I was like, man, I was in Las Vegas. Man, I was in New York. I was like, wow, man, what a fucking life. Well, once you start to do that, God damn, that changed the whole perception. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's about appreciating the opportunity. It's about having a reason why you need to go places. And most important, that's something that money cannot buy, nothing that nobody can teach you. It's about knowing that you are representing something that you truly believe in your heart. That's something that anybody, if that person doesn't smoke cigar, guess what? If I have the honor to talk to that person, that person is going to enjoy one cigar. At least one. At least one. If that cigar is speak to that person, that, that person is going to come back and that person is going to bring some people with it. Exactly. And that's how it goes. So to me, I would say that life is a, is a journey. And you have a pen and a blank page in a book. Okay. You got to write your story, buddy. You exactly. got to write it. You got to write it by, you know, like knowing what you are doing for it. And most importantly, something that you love. You know, there's a lot of people in life that they live day in and day out doing something that they hate. So if you find something that you love, do it. Do it. Follow your heart because at one point we're going to die. And you don't want to be taking your last breath having a, how do you say? Regret? Regret. There is a neighborhood that everybody knows. That neighborhood is full of regret of people that they cannot do nothing about it. You know what is that? What is that? That's the cemetery. That's one day everybody's going, we are going to end it up there. But in the meantime, you got the opportunity to, to, to not create a legacy, but to create something. Because people are going to remember you, Mike. Not the position that you accomplish in life. Not everything that the world can give it to you. is by sharing. And sharing what you got. What we are doing in Nicaragua, we are sharing the cigar that we made by hand. We are sharing the cigar that we use tobaccos that come from Nicaragua, not just in Esteli, but in Jalapa, in Ometepe, in all those places where we grow tobacco, it's about sharing. And it's very amazing to me when I go to cigar stores, what are this, bro? <laughs> this one's going to be nice. When you come to the United States or to other countries and you go to a cigar spa, everybody knows where Nicaragua is. Everybody knows where Dominican Republic is. And Honduras is because that's what we smoke, you know. Exactly. But if you ask to the regular average show, that person has no clue. What is Nicaragua? I don't know. Maybe in Africa, I guess. <laughs> but if you love cigar, the thing about cigar it gives you the appetite and the curiosity to learn more, exactly. more about. It. And one thing why I'm sharing this point is I'm gonna give you props to you, bro, because what you are doing, you are spreading the message. One thing is about doing the event like right here in Fremont and having the opportunity to meet a lot of different people, which is great. But it's very difficult to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation. Exactly. So to me, I want to thank you for giving me this amazing opportunity to be in your platform. So I, we can express what Drew Stay is all about because Drew Stay is about Drew Stay for life. And at the end of the day, Drew Estate, we got all different types of cigars from Liga Privada, Underground, Nica Rustica, Herrera Esteli, 20 Acre Farm, Papi Van Wilco, Kentucky Fire Cure, Acid Cigar, Tobacco Special, Java, Isla El Sol. God damn it. What else am I smoking? Oh, what else I'm missing? A uh, black cigar by Drew Estate? Mm -hmm. Oh, at the end of the day, life is too short, and there are so many amazing cigars up there. My only second, my two cents advice that I got for you, go and live life, go and enjoy what you got. Because what you got is what you got, which is the present, but it, if the present, you can mix it up and blend it with a very good cigar, God bless your soul. Got a great cigar. <laughs> All right, well, I'll ask you one last question mm -hmm. before we wrap up. What can you tell us anything new and upcoming for Drew Estate. All right, the new stuff right now is the cigar that we release at the Freestyle Life. And then we release the same cigar 
eight days after PCA in Vegas. And thus, Black Shade to Black S84 is our second collaboration with Metallica. Yes. So the cigar is medium body, full flavor. We use a yeah. very nice silky creamy Connecticut Shade wrapper that we import out of Ecuador and South America. We use broad leaf tobacco that comes from the state of Connecticut. It's the same tobacco that we use as a grapper in Liga Privada Number 9. And right in the filler, we use Pennsylvania tobacco and we use Nicaragua tobacco. Okay. If you are a fan of Metallica or Black American whiskey, guess what? Drew stays not going to disappoint with our cigar. Our cigar, one thing that I always said, our cigar don't collect dust. They move because people are smoking. Exactly. And I reviewed that cigar on my channel last oh, week. Man, man. Very good, smooth cigar, great flavor, full of flavor. So if you guys like a nice, smooth, light cigar, Shade to Black is your choice. That's right. Shade to Black is the new name of the game right here in Drew Estate. Exactly. Well, my <laughs> man, I want to thank you for joining hey, me on this thank interview. Thank you so very much. Man. You want to tell everybody your social media? So they oh, absolutely. So when it comes to Drew Estate, follow Drew Estate at Drew Estate Cigars in Instagram. Drew State Cigars on Facebook, www.drewstate.com, and then you stay in the loop. My, my, my personal social media account, well, Drew State Pedro on Instagram, uh, Pedro Gomez Rodriguez, because Facebook changed from yes. Pedro Drew State to Pedro Gomez Rodriguez. You know how those tech yeah. companies yeah. go, especially right here in California, right? <laughs> but... <laughs> And then uh, Drew stay, you know, so we do events all over the country, guys. So right now, tonight, we are here in Fremont. But if you follow Drew Stay, there are Drew Stay happenings all over the country. So you don't know if there is a Drew Stay happening in your local cigar store. So follow Drew Stay on social media. Subscribe to DrewStay.com. This year, 2024, we have a lot of amazing things, especially for end consumers. We got the barn smokers, the one in Connecticut. Florida, Kentucky, we got family reunion in Kentucky as well. That's a beautiful event that takes place in, 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 in a castle. That one is going to be the new one that we got. But talking about the barn smoker, you got our, around a thousand people that goes to a tobacco farm. In a tobacco farm where we grow that tobacco, where we use that tobacco for our cigar brands. Nice. So Drew State provides the food, the swag, the drinks, the cigars, the experience. Experience. Life is about experience. experience. If you are sleeping on Drew Estate, you are missing the train. Well, you are. Definitely. <laughs> Drew Estate has some good product, my man. Well, I'm there. Pedro? Mike, thank you so very much. Thank you for joining us, folks. So, thank come you so on very down. much. Aloni Cigar Lounge. This week we're having our 12th anniversary. Get down here and join us. Come pick up Drew Estate. We have a wide selection of cigars from this company. Great cigar, I might add. Thank you for joining us. I am Hijacker Mike with Smoke in the Bay. Pedro, I'm Master. Everybody, Drew stay blessed, stay smoking. I'm going to see you guys very soon. Peace.